Many of us will have seen a reference in the name manager for a cell at the bottom of the worksheet and wondered, how on earth did that happen when it's supposed to be referencing, well in this example, cell A4. In this video, I'm going to answer this mystery known as relative named ranges and show you how you can exploit them, for good of course. I wrote a blog post on this topic a while back and it was hugely popular, so stay tuned because I'm going to share some Excel secrets held close by Excel Power users. A relative named range returns a result that's relative to the cell in which you use it. Now to understand this, let's just take a moment to revisit a concept that every Excel user should know very well. And that is the way a relative cell reference automatically updates as it's copied from one cell to the next. For example, here in cell B7, if I enter a sum function, you can see the reference B2 to B6 is relative. That is, there's no dollar signs to make the reference absolute. I press enter. And then if I copy that across, you can see that the formula is now referencing column C, column D, and column E. That is, it automatically adjusts the column reference relative to its new location. And if I were to copy this formula and paste it down below, and if we F2 to edit the cell, you can see that the row references are also relative. That is, they're now referencing rows 11 to 15. And obviously there's nothing in those cells, so it returns zero. So let me delete that. Relative named ranges work in the same way, and we can use them in place of the individual sum formulas that we have up here in row seven. Let's take a look. For example, here in cell B7, we have the formula total sales. If I use the keyboard shortcut Control F3 to open the name manager, and if I select the name total sales, you can see in the refers to that it's summing cells B2 to B6 of the current sheet. Now total sales uses the sum function and therefore it's technically a named formula. So I'll refer to it as such going forward. If I close this and we look at cell C7 and again open the name manager, we can see today's sales now references column C. Likewise, if we look at column D, control F3, it now references column D. And that's because the formula in the name manager is relative. This reference here to D2 to D6 is a relative reference. And it will be exactly the same for cell E7. In other words, the name formula total sales will always sum the five cells immediately above the cell in which you place it. And it does this because the cell references in the refers to field are relative. Now it's important to understand if we look in the name manager again, the scope here for this formula is the workbook, meaning I can use it on any sheet. However, if we look at the refers to, it specifies the sheet that it's going to sum. So it's always going to sum these cells. If I go to sheet one and type in equals total sales, it's summing the cells relative to cell B7, but on the relative named formula sheet. So it's summing these cells here. Now, if I wanted to use this name relative to any sheet, then I can edit the name in here and remove the sheet name from the reference. So let's just delete that. So now all we have is the exclamation mark and then the relative cell references. Omitting the sheet name results in a dynamic sheet reference. So while the named formula will have the scope of the workbook, it will refer to the active sheet. So let me press close, we'll save those changes. Now if we go to sheet one, we can see it returns nothing because it's summing these cells here. So if I enter 100 in each of these cells, now my total sales is summing these cells here. And if we look at the relative name formula sheet, this total sales formula is still summing these cells here. It doesn't matter where you use it, it's going to sum the cells relative to the sheet in which it's on. In other words, I have a truly relative named formula relative to both the cells and the sheet. Now, the trick to creating relative named ranges is location. That is the location of the cell that you have selected prior to defining the name. And this example here was a relative named formula. And we can see that if we go control F3 and we look at total sales, it used a function. So it's a formula inside of a name. But you can also create a relative named range. Let's do that here. So I want a named range that's going to reference these five cells. And then when I use it in this cell, I want it to reference these five cells. So I want it relative 
to this cell here. That's my first cell I'm going to use it in. So I'm going to define the name. We'll just call it product sales, we'll get rid of the total. It's just picked up the name from this row here. And in here, I want it to equal these five cells. You can see it's automatically put in the absolute referencing. So I'm just going to F4 three times to remove all the absolute references and then click OK. Now I can use it to sum the cells above. So we want product sales. There it is there. Tab to select it. You can see it's referencing the cells above and I'll press enter. Now I can copy that across and then if I F2 to edit, you can see it's now referencing these five cells and these five cells and these ones. So I've got a relative named range, which I've used in a sum formula. So the key here when setting up your relative named ranges is to select the cell that you want the formula relative to before you define the name. Dynamic named ranges are a staple for the intermediate to advanced Excel user. They allow us to return a range that adapts to our changing data. For example, we might use a dynamic named range as the source for a pivot table. However, typically these dynamic named ranges aren't relative, but an area where relative dynamic named ranges will come in handy is with sparklines. And here in column A, I've inserted a group of sparklines, and you can see the data range is hard coded to the cells C2 to I9. And this means that when new data is added for future months in column J onward, we'll need to edit the sparkline data range and update it manually. I know it's almost a swear word in Excel. Now, ideally, we'd use a dynamic named range for the sparkline data range, but you can't enter a dynamic named range for a group of sparklines, only for individual sparklines. And personally, I don't fancy creating eight separate dynamic named ranges. That's just way too much work. Luckily, we can create one dynamic name range that's relative to the cell it's in, and then reuse that for each individual sparkline. It's a lot quicker to copy and paste eight sparklines than create eight dynamic named ranges. Let's take a look. So let's delete these sparklines, and we'll create a relative dynamic named range. Now, I want my range relative to the first sparkline cell which is A2, and I've selected that. So now I can go up to the Formulas tab and define a name. We're going to call it Sparkline Range. In the refers to, I'm just going to delete that and start from scratch. So the first cell in my range will be C2. And then I need the range operator, which is the colon. It automatically puts in C2 again, so I'm just going to backspace to delete that. Now, in order to use my arrow keys inside this refers to dialog box, I need to press F2 to bring it into edit mode. Now I can arrow back and delete the dollar sign for this reference as well, because I want this to be relative. So as I use this dynamic relative named range in the next sparkline, I want it to reference cell C3. Now we don't know the last cell in our data set. At the moment, we only have data up to July and I want to allow it to grow as I add more months. So we use index to return the reference to the last cell that's currently got data in it in row two. Now, if you have Office 365, you could use the new XLOOKUP function. I'm sticking with index because everybody has that. So what's the range that we want indexed? Well, it's C2, and I'm going to allow for growth in my data through to column O. Now, if you're expecting much more data, then you just extend that range out further. You could even select the whole row, but I recommend just selecting a few more cells than you think you're going to need. Now, again, this needs to be relative, so I'm going to F4 three times to remove the absolute referencing. The next argument for index is the row number argument. Now, I only have one row referenced, so I can skip that. I'm just going to enter another comma. And the last argument for index is what's the column number? Well, we don't know the column number because it's going to change. So we're going to use the count our function for that. And what are we counting? Well, I'm going to count the column labels because they will always have data in them. Even if these values are blank, if my column label has a month name in it, then that's a good sign that there's going to be data underneath there. So it's just safer to count the column labels. Again, I've taken it out to column O. So we're going to close the parentheses on counter, close the parentheses on index, 
and I'll click OK. Now before I insert my spark lines I want to test that my formula is evaluating correctly. So I'm going to select cell A3, go back into the name manager, select my dynamic named range, click in the refers to field, anywhere will do, and then if I move the name manager box you can see the marching ants are around the cells that the formula is evaluating to and I can see it's correctly selecting Jan to July for row 3. So my dynamic relative named range is working as expected. Let's go ahead and insert the spark lines. So on the insert tab I want a column spark line. My data range is going to be my new relative dynamic named range and I'll click OK. And now all I need to do is copy it down. I can left click and drag. Unfortunately you can't double click spark lines to copy them down. And you can see each spark line is picking up its relative row. Now if I were to add more data, for example if we have data for August, if you keep an eye on the spark lines you'll see they incorporate it automatically. And likewise if I were to add another row the spark line would adjust to pick up the row that it's relative to. Okay, take a moment to download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here or in the video description. It contains all the examples covered in this video. I hope you can make use of relative named ranges. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also be wondering why their named ranges are mysteriously changing themselves to some random cell in the bottom of the worksheet.